There are certain events in life where you wish you could just peel away the time and get there faster. When I was a kid, six years old, there was nothing as exciting as going on that family vacation to Disney World in December. A little bit older, nothing like watching that first basketball game of the season. And yet even older, nothing like February 17th, 2002, when I'd have the great honor of walking down to my very own chuppah. Now, 3,300 years ago, the Jewish people had their own chuppah experience. They had the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. Now, you can imagine the excitement was palpable. Everyone knew something incredible was going to happen. God is going to give us the Torah. And yet we say in the Passover Agudah, if we would have gotten to Sinai, to Mount Sinai, and we would not have received the Torah, it would have been sufficient. Dayenu. Sufficient for what? Imagine if it was December and I'm six years old and we take our family vacation to Disney World and guess what? The sign says closed for the season. And you can imagine if I got to the Hawks basketball game, oops, it was an away game today. And the worst feeling would be I walk down to my own chuppah and I got the wrong date, come back later. It would have been sufficient for what? What would have been the purpose? What would have been the point? Revolbi, one of the great minds of the 1900s, explains that it would have been sufficient what we achieved even without receiving the Torah. What did we receive? We received, or what did we achieve? We achieved something called achdus. We, t- we received, we achieved togetherness. The Jewish people at Mount Sinai had a togetherness that was unparalleled in the history of the world. And that was the main ingredient, the ingredient, which allowed for the Torah to have been given. I was at a sermon last week and there was a rabbi speaking about the importance of togetherness and trying to achieve togetherness and a congregant was sitting behind me and he said, if only it were that easy. And I started thinking, you know what, he's right. It's a great message. Let's be together. Let's be one with all of our differences and all of our unique attitudes and approaches to life and to Judaism. It's easy to say, let's be one, let's be together. But how in the world do you achieve it? I could just tell you, there's one quick story that I heard from Rabbi Sacher Fran. It's an amazing story. And the story goes that there was someone, he used to get a newspaper prescription, and his neighbor would take it and read his paper, a chutzpah. And every week he would go and read the paper. And he started boiling in it. Like, the guy couldn't buy his own paper? What's he supposed to do? He went up to his rabbi, to his mentor, and the rabbi said, you know what you have to do? Buy your neighbor an additional paper. He said, what? He's reading my paper. He's stealing my paper. I should get him a paper? He said, that's what you should do for achtos. That's what you should do for togetherness. And I think there's so much truth to that. We all want to have unity, but we want to have unity on my terms. If only you could see it my way, then we'd all be together. The message of unity is not to see things the way I see it. It's to see things the way you see it. And that, of course, means stepping out of your comfort zone. Perhaps there's someone who wronged you. And guess what? You were 100% right. They were 100% wrong. You know what you should do to that person? Write them a letter and say, wishing you a happy Shavuot. Send them a cheesecake and say, hope you're doing well. Now, how? That's a chutzpah nara. That's ridiculous. What about my honor? What about my self-worth? The answer is, even when you're right, stretch beyond yourself. The way to achieve achdus, the way to achieve unity, is not waiting for everyone else to come around to your point of view. If that's the case, like the congregant said behind me, we're never going to get there. The way you get there is by saying, if I have a broken relationship with that person, haven't spoken to them in a number of years, send them a letter, send them a text, give them a call. Even when they wronged you, if you want to achieve achdus, if you want to achieve the main ingredient that we needed at Mount Sinai, you have to make sure you're looking out for the other. It's a time not, as we say, to be makbid on your own kavod. It's not a time to be focused on your honor. It's a time to go beyond yourself and be sensitive to the needs of others. Even if it means you're stepping down, you're no longer holding your ground, you're allowing someone else who wronged you to get back into your life. That, I think, is the way to achieve togetherness. It doesn't come naturally. It may not even come normally. But the point is, we are the ones, as individuals, who can make that difference. And if we do take a step beyond ourselves and stop holding that grudge, then we can achieve that which the Jewish people did 
which is the necessary ingredient of Mount Sinai, which is to achieve the togetherness. We can do it. We know who has wronged us. We know how to repair relationships. Let's try to be the better person so that we also can stand at the mountain of Sinai in just a few days and say, we've earned the togetherness and now we're ready to receive the Torah. Wishing all of you a wonderful Shabbos and a meaningful Shavuot.